Okay, so hello, hello everyone. Good morning, good evening, depending on where you are. And today we're going to speak about how to write a CV for a consulting company for 2021. My name is Alexandra and I'm going to moderate this webinar. Before we're going to start, I would like to tell you about the format and rules a little bit. Oh, first of all, don't hesitate. If you have any questions, you can write this chat, uh, questions down in the uh, Zoom chat because afterwards we're going to have a Q&A session or maybe uh, while the presentation coaches are going to choose some of the questions, which uh, may be uh, interesting for everyone, and uh, they're going to reply them. So if you have any questions about your CV, for example, because today we're going to talk about CV, and if you have any questions, please write uh, down. Then we're going to have a quiz. Uh, I would like to mention that you will have uh, a very interesting bonus if you're going to win there. Moreover, if you want to get the presentation, uh, please Tag us somewhere on social media, maybe Facebook or Instagram. Share, just tag our consulting masters or something, and then you will receive this presentation. And still to the end, because there will be a special offer. Now I'm going to pass the word to our coach, uh, Andre Holmenko, one of our, co of our coaches. And he's going to start with uh, the webinar. Yeah, Andrew. all right. Uh, very warm welcome, all the participants. And thank you very much, uh, Alexandra, for your introduction. Basically, today I would like to discuss with you, we have a very important talk topic about how you actually got to write a CV which matters and how you got to pass the interview screening with, with that CV. So today specifically, I want to discuss with you a few things. I want to discuss with you, first of all, the steps of the uh, application process, and you will uh, learn from today how to write different sections in your CV. We will provide you together with Gaurav uh, recommendations on how to, what are the general principles um, which you can apply. Then what to write in your education section, maybe what to highlight over there, what is most important in your work experience and how to do that properly, what is the meaning of your extracurricular and leadership achievements as well as of additional skills and interests. Are you excited? Can you maybe just indicate this into the chat and uh, plus uh, or say yes or uh, yeah, thanks uh, also Joseph, thanks Aditya. And yeah, now guys, I just want to ask you one question. Can you maybe write down into the chat, why do you want to go for consulting? I would be really very interested to know about it. Can you maybe write down into the chat your answers? Like what's, uh, what is really your motivation to join consulting? Or what drives you interests? To go. So, what about salary? Probably is going to be number yeah. one. Oh no, career opportunities actually. <laughs> Hans Bayer wants to have career opportunities, working on projects with big impact or to work with real world problems. Yeah, John, anything else? All right, so that's basically uh, also uh, key principles in consulting. Like, do you really want to work with the CEOs of this world? Do you really want to work on the projects which really matter and solve the most complex uh, problems of the world? Do you want to drive the climate change or do you want to contribute to zero emission? Or would you like, as I did, as I had a chance at 21 to contribute to the hosting of Winter Sochi Olympic Games? Is this something exciting for you? Can you please then identify and say yes in the chat? I'll go to work directly for CEO and CFOs, started developing skills and become executive later. Yeah, Aditya, that's exactly the right attitude. Or what else? Maybe it's your career growth opportunity, or maybe it's an opportunity for you to travel in consulting, or maybe it's it's all about the money, money, money at the end, and you want to receive an above average salary. Salary, because salaries in consulting are usually 30 to 50 percent higher than um, in other industries. And enjoy this view from your business class uh, flights. Or maybe there is something else uh, for you for that. Or do you want to be surrounded by Is this something what are you looking for? All right. So then let's move on. That uh, we are on the same page. But ladies and gentlemen, like, what are your major concerns? What might be holding you? 
from pursuing this career? Can you maybe write down your answers into the chat? I also want to understand what are you worried about? All the case interviews, the interview invites, job offers. Right, I see case in case interview. Yeah, even before proceeding into cases, it, the key question is actually how to pass this hurdle and how to get um, get the opportunity and secure your interview invite. Basically, how to make sure that uh, your profile is visible through recru uh, the recruiter and that it passes the screening. And how much time do you need to take prepare to prepare yourself, or what should be the right application strategy? Or what kind of do you need to have over there? What, or what kind of background do you need to have? Uh, or how you can become a good candidate? Or if you are female or if you are from um, other minorities, whether you will still be able to have equal opportunities. Don't you have these concerns? Seems like you don't. All right. <laughs> then let's basically uh, kind of move on. Basically, consulting preparation work for. And the various my uh, answer is it will work for everyone. It will work for people from all different backgrounds, whether you are an engineer or whether you are a business person or whether you have about creating equal opportunities for, uh, for both two experience highs in all geographies, whether it's an internship or whether it's a full-time position. Uh, don't be afraid because our stories with Kaurav will also show you that we, even though we didn't came from the target business school, we still made it and therefore you can also make it as well. And we are here to help you to master your challenge and to break into consulting industry. So yeah, let's maybe quickly speak who we are. Uh, my name is Andre Homolenko and I'm a founder of uh, Consulting Masters. And our company is, uh, was founded uh, together with uh, Kaurav Bosle, uh, this young and pretty gentleman uh, residing in India. So let me maybe tell you briefly about myself. Uh, when I came to Germany, I faced, uh, I'm born Ukrainian, I faced the most natural challenge. First of all, no one really know about my school. Uh, I studied in Kiev National Economic University, but it's definitely a non-target school if we're talking about Germany and no one has never heard about it. And um, in my country, I couldn't lack its reputation while being abroad. And I also, my German, my German was not very good. Nowadays, I can I can uh, continue in German and can auch auf Deutsch wechseln und weiterhin diesen Webinar auf Deutsch machen. Das würde mir gar nichts ausmachen. Uh, but at those days, uh, my German skills were not uh, very good. And can you actually imagine how difficult it could be to solve a case not just in English, but also to switch to German uh, to the language? and have this fluency in terms of communication as, as this complexity to actually uh, crack and navigate uh, the whole logic and the communication of the case in the language which you barely know. Are you with me? Do you think, is it difficult? Eric Hugai, um, plus is, uh, indeed it was pretty, and yeah, <laughs> I did hear it. <laughs> All right. Uh, nevertheless, I simply I kept on practicing a lot. I uh, cracked more than 150 cases. I, actually, afterwards, I really stopped counting. And I was even rejected nine times before I received my first offer from ZDB Consulting in Germany. And nevertheless, I was recognized by one of the senior partners who recruited me as one of the best case solvers uh, of that year. And two years afterwards, after I needed to leave ZB, I got into and I was promoted twice, not within 24 months, as it is uh, a common practice to get a first promotion at Roland Berger. I got my first promotion already after five months and my second promotion after additional 12 months. So within 24 some of my peers were working for this. And now it's time for me to give something back because from that experience, I want you to generation to become masters of consulting. 
so that you don't need to go through all those challenges on your own and that I can help you and navigate you through that process. And then I also want to pass the word to my good friend uh, and my partner uh, in business, Kaurav Poslev, with whom we're doing this together. Hello, everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, uh, depending on where you are. <clears throat> uh, this is Gaurav. Uh, I'm taking this call from Mumbai in India. And it's so great to have you all uh, very motivated uh, and uh, you know bright individuals yeah, uh, on this session. Okay. So, uh, yeah, I'm an ex uh, McKinsey consultant, uh, but that's uh, everything in the hindsight, you know, sounds so amazing. Yeah. Uh, it's great to say that I'm an ex McKinsey consultant, but uh, it's, it's been a tough journey. Uh, uh, I I actually graduated also from non-target school, not only the bachelor's in India, but also my master's <clears throat> in Europe uh, was not from a target school. Uh, and um, of course, uh, getting into consulting uh, is tough. We all know the kind of ratios that we always hear about, like uh, how many people apply, how many people get through. I was also on the other dark side of that story uh, when I started applying. I started applying uh, in in uh, in MBA for, for internships, and uh, for internships, out of fifty consulting companies that I applied, I received all fifty rejections. Um, however, I think slowly but surely, I I, I got the understanding of uh, what does this market want? You know, how you should be basically selling yourself, right? Uh, and when you sell yourself, when you are in the interview, how you should be ready and uh, not even, you know, kind of sleep once. Yeah. So a lot of hard work, uh, a lot of smart work to do networking, uh, case practice. And um, without speaking German, I did land into McKinsey Germany, uh, which is uh, one of the toughest um, uh, you know, kind of office even within McKinsey to crack because they have something called a super day. So on a single day, you have written test plus uh, seven interviews, right? From the first interview till the partner discussion. And every interview is up or out. Yeah, so if you get rejected, you're out. Uh, so it's a, it's a, it's a tough uh, thing to crack. I could crack it. And yes, I think um, from that day onwards, it's been consulting and coaching. Um, and the numbers are here to say, more than 5,000 hours of consulting and uh, I think probably now hitting almost 600 people from uh, uh, mentored by us have gone to uh, MBPs and top consulting companies. Yeah. Uh, so great to have you here, right? And uh, today's topic is very important actually because CV is a huge hurdle. Yeah, Getting your candidature, CV is your marketing document. So uh, getting it through uh, to the interview round is a big hurdle and a lot of people get rejected. So um, do tune in, uh, keep tuning in for the next one hour, one and a half hour. Uh, we'll try and share as much as you can, uh, as we can with you. Yeah, all the very best. All right, guys. So maybe just to give you a couple of facts about our company, together with uh, Gaurav, we combine not only 12 years of experience in consulting and 10 years of coaching experience, but what we are extremely proud of is that we were already able to help over the last three years more than 500 people to get actual jobs uh, and started working in consulting, including more than 200 of our clients are currently working with uh, so-called MVP firms, namely McKinsey, BCG, and Bain, and more than 300 of other employees uh, have become the employees of other reputable firms like Rollenberger Strategy and Oliver Wyman, Kearney, um, Big Four firms, Accenture Strategy, and many, many others. And those dots on the map, they are just exactly exemplary identifying those people whom we have helped uh, to get offers in the leading consulting firms um, all across the world. You probably see there is just one continent which is not covered yet and it's probably Antarctic. Um, I hope that with the climate change uh, this will also change soon <laughs> and maybe McKinsey or one of other companies will open the office over there so that we can conquer this white spot as well. Uh, I'm coming back with a quiz for you. Uh, as you remember, I said you in the very beginning that we're going to have quiz time, and I would like to announce that the winner of this case is of this quiz is going to have a special bonus from us. You will be able to send us your CV. And our coaches are going to check it and give you feedback on what you should change, uh, what you should add, and all this stuff. So now there will be a link in the chat box and you should follow it and we're going to play now. Okay, are you ready? Let's start. But be careful about the time and the answer. Both are very important.
Yeah, okay. We have some uh, right answers, some wrong answers. It's more detailed, it's true. Let's move further. And the winner here is uh, Aditya. That's good. But it's not the end, so don't be extremely happy about it. Of course, it was false. Yes, most of you answered correctly. Mm -hmm. Still the first, Aditya. Let's move to the third question. Skills. Okay, there was only one person who replied correctly. Who is it? Ross, <laughs> again. <laughs> um, Ross won uh, last week in our quiz as well. Okay, let's move further to the last quote. Okay, to the fourth question. Great. I hope there are no questions about this one. Okay, I'm curious. So the last one, let's see who's gonna be the winner. Yeah, of course, obviously. And the winner is, who is it, who is it? Russ, <laughs> congrats. Okay, that means that the client manager is gonna text you, connect with you. Congratulations from me and from others. Uh, and that means that maybe you're gonna have another bonus, okay? As you won twice already. So that's the end with the quiz time. And now we're gonna continue with the presentation and we will move to the content part. Thanks, thanks Alexander. Let's... Uh start discussing the topic uh, of the webinar okay uh, just to set a context uh, in case uh, you guys are not aware of yeah so there are phases in which this in this uh, recruitment cycle or uh, recruitment process yeah it starts off uh, with the cv okay so this is basically an application phase where uh, two documents typically are asked by most of the leading consulting companies uh, uh, which is your cv and cover letter Okay, uh, the second phase is some companies these days take uh, tests. And in fact, the number of companies taking tests is increasing day by day, uh, just because the interest in consulting is increasing and uh, consulting uh, and, the, and the people, and, uh, the consulting companies. Yeah, can you, those who are not or do not want to speak relevant, they can actually mute themselves. Okay, so the point is that uh, a lot of companies have now introduced uh, of optional test because that's a very fast and efficient way of filtering the candidates okay then uh, again optional pre-screening so you would have heard about uh, mckinsey doing a pre-screening call it's a 30 minute interview in which uh, either a small case in some case of uh, some of the offices in some cases an hr kind of a discussion happens but there is a screening process all this is basically to ensure that uh, the time that the real consultants will put in to interview you yeah it's worth it yeah so they want to get rid of those who are not good fit in large number uh, in a low cost method that's why cv screening and um, the test and the screen uh, and the pre screening all these things happen yeah and of course then uh, the real interviews start and depending on the company offices etc um, in the first round, you have two to four interviews. In final, again, you have two to four interviews, not just by companies, but also by your performances. Yeah? So, for example, in a lot of consulting companies, in first round, if you get both the interviews, like you will really become a star interview cracker the way uh, Andre did when he applied, yeah? then you don't need a third interview. But if you have an interview where in first interview says yes, another interview say I am not very sure. Then even in the within the round, the third interview is uh, taken. Yeah. So depending on that, we have two to four interviews, and of course, uh, at the end, uh, if you reach this stage, then you will be rolled out an offer. Okay. So that's the that's the entire process. Like, and uh, what we are going to discuss today is the CV part, the prerequisite, the 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 document that results in the highest rejection but at the same time you know a document that can easily be uh you know kind of crafted to make your way to the next process 
Okay, so I just want uh, you guys to have a look at this document first before we go into this uh, really section by section. And uh, I want to tell you that in consulting, uh, or you, you would have seen a lot of CVs, by the way, right? At the time of uh, applying in some of the MBA or some of the bachelor's schools, they tell you to uh, fill up or make a bio data, make a CV, make a resume, whatever you call it. Yeah? And uh, your journey of making CV or making a resume starts at that age and then over the time you make you know different types and different formats of cvs yeah um, but there are a lot of unique things about consulting cv it's quite concise it's a one pager cv um, guys understand this thing very very clearly that uh, what is i mean there's a definition of a consultant that i want you to remember okay so uh, consultant from a perspective of recruitment or from a selection if you see the definition it's it says consultant is an expensive advisor that solves ambiguous problems and convinces the client of the solution. Yeah, uh, It's a very simple sounding definition, but this definition will actually tell you that by structure, a consultant comes into way or comes into the picture only when the problems are tough, problems are challenging. So hiring a consultant versus solving the problem by your own employees, if you just look at the cost difference, it's almost five to six times. Yeah. So companies don't hire consultant just like that. They only hire when the challenge is so uh, you know kind of critical and difficult that they cannot solve it. As a result, when we are hiring an employee or hiring a consultant, yeah, we also want someone who can actually set and achieve challenging goals. Okay. And this is something that needs to be reflected in the CV. Yeah? CV is your marketing document. This is where it has to come out that in your life, you have actually uh, set and achieved challenging goals. Yeah? So it's all about putting you know, the highlights of what you have done till now. Yeah? Understand this? We don't want it to be detailed. We are in the sense of like three, four pager documents. If you are seeing a product manager CV, for example, four pager CV, and it talks about all the projects in detail, etc. No, here we are talking about a very concise and punchy version of it. Okay. <clears throat> what this particular slide talks about is the typical things that consulting firm firms look for in the CV, right? For example, see, I mean, think for think like this. If I have to sell myself, okay, or as a recruiter, if I have to see the glimpses or proof of excellence, proof of doing something challenging. What is it that I will look for? Yeah, One proxy is like, of course, big brands of employees and or schools. If you have made it, let's say, for example, for engineering in MIT, right? I'm assuming that with the MIT screening, yeah, uh, I'm sure that this person is among the top, right? So that's the proxy that I will learn. Hence, a big brand of employees and school is something that we look for. Second, academic performance. Again, the same thing. Yeah, No one says that you know if you are a bookworm, you are a good consultant. No one says that if you get 10 out of 10, that means you are a good consultant. Yeah, But when I'm thinking from the perspective of choosing or filtering, one of the, the yardstick that I have in hand is GPA. If I have to choose between somebody with a GPA 3.8 and 2.8, yeah, Right, and I have thousands of those resumes to screen. Of course, you know you have to give me a credit for choosing three point eight, isn't it? Right. Similarly, uh, test scores in some of the analytical subjects like math. Uh, uh, if you have business studies, then those uh, those subjects. Yeah. Evidence of leadership and people skills. Consulting is collaborative problem solving, guys. Collaborative problem solving. Yeah. So leadership and people skill is core, and you have to demonstrate. Yeah. Uh, that you have achieved a success with people around it. Yeah, we are not here to hire scientists for NASA. Yeah, we don't want people who sit in the corner of the cubicle and solve and have a eureka moment. Those are also brilliant guys, no doubt about it. But those that is not the kind of problem that we solve in consulting. So hence, as a result of that, evidence of leadership and people skills is very very important. Okay. Uh, high achieving, achievement in career experience, of course. So in terms of the experience candidates or those who have had uh, work experience, 
what we are looking for is high achievement so what do you mean by achievement it can be anything like a very challenging projects project that you have basically worked on or another yardstick is fast promotions i think andre spoke about he getting out of turn proportions uh, promotions right so what are these yeah this is the proof or a yardstick of excellence right so uh, these are the things that we scan through when we are looking to uh, you know kind of uh, separate those who will interview for consulting company and who will not yeah so keep these things in mind okay and i think we spoke about the statistics a, a little bit while back 90% of the applicants get rejected at the cv screening stage yeah so uh, it's a, it, it's important yeah i think i don't need to tell you now that uh, it's it's how important it is so with this uh, would you like to know how to write a proper cv can you maybe identify this uh, in the chat guys okay Yes, Garof. It seems like they came for it. <laughs> okay, very nice. So uh, uh, let's. Uh, so I think uh, one of the things that you would have observed, and I don't know whether because of the Zoom uh, footer, it's getting uh, kind of there is a there is an overlap. But guys, this is a one pager CV. Okay, this is a one pager CV, and you should have a one pager CV. Yeah, and uh, I always say that CV is the most expensive real estate in the world okay you have to use this real estate of one page very very cautiously a few things that we are highlighting over here yeah i'll just go through it and then i'll probably tell you some additional points as well mm -hmm. of course you also uh, observe and absorb yeah this cv uh, that we have put uh, on the screen so the cv fits on one page yeah uh, please use conventional font Yeah, I have seen some people submitting the CV with weird fonts just because they like it. Yeah, even if the consulting company says on their website that we uh, encourage creativity, this is not the place to show creativity. Okay, so uh, keep the simple Arial or Calibri kind of font. Keep the font size eleven or at least ten. Yeah, we do not see. Uh, you have only one page. That doesn't mean you reduce the font. It has to be very very visible. Okay, you need to concise the content and not, you know, kind of concise the font. Hmm? So, uh, you know, kind of keep the font ten or eleven. Play with the margin doesn't mean you literally, you know, kind of start from the uh, start of the page. You can either use, uh, you know, the normal margin or you can be at max you can use thin margin. Hmm? Why am I telling you this? Because we see a lot of CVs which, at a glance, yeah, put a scary feeling. yeah because they look too busy okay so if if it looks too busy crowded yeah you are already you know kind of scaring the the reviewer yeah so there has to be a space there has to be a you know kind of breathing space in your cv hmm? so keep a big enough font normal font yeah and keep keep you know reasonable margins okay secondly now this is not just about bullet points but i think uh, all of we know now that uh, in the cv that the way to write is in the bullet point we and we don't write in the paragraph format okay we, we he, this is not the place to tell a story okay this is to the the place to you know kind of uh, give them a highlights okay so write bullet points in every experience or your educational background when you are explaining something about your achievement about what you have done write it in the form of a uh, bullet point and bullet point not just that but the sentence should it's not a quince english or it's not a typical uh, spoken english yeah you should be starting off with a action verb a strong action verb for example build product strategy if you see the first bullet point on this for a web platform etc etc so it talks about a sentence where it starts with what exactly you did for it what did i do i did i built something what did you build a product strategy then it talks about for whom or in what situation and third it's about the impact if you just to for a simplification because a lot of you guys probably would have started uh, preparing for the interviews and you are familiar with the star format yeah situation then task action and result right same thing yeah ensure that your sentence has a representation of all these four so what did you what was the task you know building a, pro, a product strategy 
right? Or task and action over here is 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 basically integrated. Okay. What's the result? For example, over here, uh, you know, uh, let's say where, where was it? Okay, build product strategy for a web platform. So web platform and managing a recycle is a situation over here, right? What happened over here? Now see, even in this line, the result is something that he hasn't explicitly mentioned. Okay, but look at the third line: design business model with sustainable strategies for Nike and Sony, aim to reduce CO2 equivalent impact by 50% and increase the profit margin by 10%. That's the result. Yeah. So in most of your sentences, unless it's it's a it's an activity, yeah, where you cannot really quantify result, most of your sentences should have a result. And that result, as much as possible, should be quantifiable. Or in terms of numbers, you would have heard it so many times. Consultants love numbers, yeah. So which is right. Even in the CV, you know, as many places as possible, you should be quantifying your achievements. So rather than saying increase the profit margin, you know, uh, or just leaving at that, or increased, uh, you know, profit margin margin significantly, rather than using those adjectives and adverbs, yeah, put a number. Profit margin by ten percent. Okay, that's going to be extremely important. Then, uh, while when you are reading about the CV, yeah, it's always while you are finalizing it or while you are taking a stock of what you are representing in the CV, guys, it's not a bad idea to see whether it is demonstrating the four core consulting skills: problem solving, leadership, entrepreneurial drive, and personal impact. Means, you know. Just see whether the problem that you have solved, the achievement that you are talking about, yeah, do they uh, actually demonstrate significant complex problem? Are you giving them some evidences of people leadership, team leadership? Are there any bullet points where you have really shown entrepreneurial drive? Means what? It need not be you starting a new startup. It can be something like something that demonstrates that you have gone above and beyond, gone extra mile. And personal impact, right? Where we are talking about, uh, you know, convincing uh, people or you know, kind of leading a team, getting it together, yeah, holding it together, yeah. So those things, you know, just check whether you have in your CV. When it comes to sections, uh, I would say uh, the, the typical section that we have is personal, education, experience, extracurricular activities, and if there is anything on the additional skills of interest or interest. Uh, a common question comes. Should I start with education or should I start with professional experience? Uh, there are two ways to look at it. Okay, one is if you are a working professional, yeah, if you are currently working, it's always a good idea to start with professional experience. Okay, but if you are coming out of MBA or if you are coming out of education or if you are still uh, getting educated, it's always a good idea to put education. Okay, another tactical angle that we see in some of the good CVs is. People think about what are my selling points. Now, for example, if you are working in a company which is not that known, let's say a startup which is not yet bloomed, if you are an MIT or Harvard graduate, yeah, then though you are working, you would start your CV with education. Why? Because at the start you want to stress that I am a Harvard grad. Similarly, you are not from a very uh, known school, yeah, but let's say you have worked. With a very prominent company, yeah, and you want to highlight that, then you would still put professional experience first. Getting the point? So remember, it's your marketing document. So you need to think about your own marketing strategy. Yeah, for me, what is it that can be sold easily and effectively? That should form the uh, top part of your CV. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> what? What's the point? I think uh, the. Key point or the large point that this is a marketing document, and hence you should be saying something that is marketable, and you should be talking about your USPs. Yeah, that central point you should always keep in mind in throughout this discussion. Okay, so see GPA is listed. Yeah, for every degree, unless extremely low. Now, if you have done a degree, writing the grade about it is obvious. Yeah, but you will then choose a selective communication, right? Common sense. If it is too low, you will not mention it. If it is very high, of course you will tom tom about it, right? Then not only you will write the grade, etc., but in the bracket you will write top ten percent of the class, yeah, or uh, you know whatever 
uh, in the dean's list, whatever it is, right? So ensure that the highlight of your academic is basically there on the CV. Of course, and in the same light series, awards, scholarship, uh, grants, you know, um, all these things should come on the CV and ensure that you quantify that as well. Now, for example, see elected as a student ambassador yeah, for a student body of over 100. Now, why is he right, written that? Because becoming a student ambassador, I don't know right, what's the class size over here or how many students are you representing? Is it 5? Is it 50? Is it 500? Now, by saying that I was representing more than 100 students, yeah, he has quantified, he has given me a chunk. Or, you know, if you're talking about, you know, kind of being a topper, yeah, then say that topper in a class of 900. Yeah. Um, especially do that if you are coming from non, uh, uh, non, not so known or, uh, uh, or, you know, kind of those kind of colleges where people don't know. Now, for example, most of the MBA uh, consulting companies know, know that Harvard has a batch size of 900, right? Uh, but they might not know for non-target school. So be extra uh, careful over there. Okay. Uh, dissertation thesis, if relevant, of course, you should be writing it. Uh, no doubt about it. And um, I mean, it depends on what kind of thesis are we talking about. If, if the thesis has taken a lot of time uh, in your educational uh, uh, you know, kind of period, then you should surely be talking about it. But not just the name of the thesis, but probably some so what or how that thesis or how that topic is helping, either helping or the, how it was you know, recognized by some journal, it was published in something. This, this thesis was ranked like in top 10 out of the 50 thesis. You know, the achievement oriented sentence you should be writing. Don't just write something like, you know, uh, research on uh, lithium ion cells, uh, whatever, a uh, capacity. Yeah. That is just a statement. I don't know what to do with it. Right. Uh, if you write that, you know, research lithium ion capacity and proposed, you know, ways of improving its efficiency by 7%. Yeah. And presented to whatever automobile association in Frankfurt. Yeah, then it, it gives me, uh, you know, kind of uh, a sense of you having done something significant. Yeah. So it's the same thing, but written in a very, very marketing kind of a manner. This question comes especially from people who are extremely experienced and trying for lateral hiring or those who are experienced doing MBA and then applying for consulting that uh, we have a lot of experiences or a lot of companies we have switched. Should we talk about all? Uh, so actually, it's not the case. Yeah. And that's where the technical definition or difference between biodata and CV comes. Because biodata is an almost like a legal document where you need to talk about everything that you have done. Whereas in CV, we talk about the element of your experience, yeah, which uh, basically is worth selling, worth marketing. Okay, and by definition, right? Uh, I suggest rather than skipping an uh, an intermediate experience yeah you go reverse chronological okay and uh, and talk about those three to four um, uh, top experiences uh, that you have uh, basically uh, experienced yeah why i say so because even logically thinking let's say uh, in 2021 i am applying okay in any case representation of my candidature is better done by my experience between, let's say, for example, from 2015 to 21, than my experience from 2004 to 2015, isn't it? Yeah, because I am what I am, right? And and basically that recency effect is more important than what I did when I was a kid. Yeah. So uh, ensure that if you have to choose, in in uh, or prioritize your experiences, choose latest experiences over old experiences. Yes, of course. Each, each experience means each experience bucket or that paragraph or that uh, section yeah, should have not more than three to five bullet points. More than five bullet points, it's also proven now that if you go beyond five, the person who is reading it, yeah, he has lost interest in reading the sixth bullet. Right? Three to five bullet points. Moreover, I would say that keep or write the bullet points in the order of interesting things that you have done. Yeah, more significant things, more interesting thing you should put above as a, let's say first bullet point. Okay, and less interesting below that and like that. Yeah, this is just an example, I think, but we have already spent a lot of time on the 
full length cv so we can go forward extra curricular achievements yeah so uh yes of course one or two experiences you can talk about uh and uh, don't i don't like i mean i i don't like this particular section to be overwhelming yeah there are people uh, who give disproportionate amount of real estate to extra curricular yeah so see guys i think uh, uh in consulting at least your academic and professional experiences uh you know will have much more weightage um, than the, your extra curricular of course uh, if you are only a student and uh, you have only internship to write about then uh, uh, then you, you 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 might say that for my leadership experience i need extra curricular yes you should have that and that's the reason this particular section is important but like it shouldn't happen that 60% of your cv is extra curricular and 40% is uh, curricular and uh, work experience yeah so ensure that you give due importance for it now i will not go through the bullet points probably you can take uh, 10 seconds to go through what all is possible as extra curricular activities yeah leadership and co curricular again i think very very similar uh, to this yeah so uh, just one experience over there additional skills yes absolutely so uh, this is also a contention huh? so language it and uh, hobbies i see a lot of people uh, writing uh, microsoft word and ppt in it guys this is like even my two year daughter can do it these days yeah so that is hygiene okay don't put something which doesn't add any value yeah if you know something like python or r yeah or if you know anything uh, like a uh, uh statistics uh driven or uh, statistic uh, you know kind of analysis software like spss or any of the new ones spss was my generation i don't know whether you guys what do you use but uh, if you have something like that then you talk about it yeah otherwise even if you skip it as a section it's okay yeah if there is nothing to boast about under it don't say it okay even language if you are, if you only know english and nothing else please don't put that yes don't put this section just for the sake of it or for the heck of it if you have something to sell something to market yeah then say it otherwise you know uh, it's not a good idea hobbies and we have a lot of hobbies okay out of that you know at least from my perspective what i try to see is can i write hobbies in which i have something to talk about so for example if say if i say uh, you know i like to travel yeah then ensure that you have something to uh, really uh, you know kind of boast about or talk about because if someone some interview picks it up and says where have you traveled and then you say you know i have traveled only probably two cities yeah then uh, it's a it's a big deal yeah i mean it's a it's a it's a it's it's, it's a problem right uh, but yes if you have traveled 10 countries if you have gone backpacking yeah you if you have something interesting to say then please do put uh, you know uh, traveling as a hobby so think about what you are putting yeah don't just put it for the sake of putting it so interest in addition information there is an example of that okay go ahead super so i think we covered the the sections i think one by one but of course i think uh, i'm i'm happy to answer any of the questions that you might have guys can you maybe put either in the chat your questions or raise your hands if you have any questions and also you have an opportunity then we can yeah keep you the word you can switch on your camera and ask your questions if you have any so do you have any questions yes yeah. joseph yeah okay so uh i want to ask about the um resume right yeah uh so my resume right now i'm a student and a big portion of it is the extracurricular achievements so i'm not exactly sure how i would uh make my resume be more on the education slash professional achievements portion right now i have uh two internships and each of them has four points so i i feel like i'm really kind of um how do i say this like i i really explained a lot of what i've done in those internships that is already quite 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 good enough you no know? four points of and two experiences means we are talking about eight bullet points of around 15 16 lines right which is already covering uh, half the cv plus you have education which you will probably also have four four five lines if you can talk about some of the achievements yeah your gpa you being whatever class leader or you scoring uh, 3.9 out of 4 in some of the subjects so all those things you if you add up yeah i think it should cover around 60 60 65 or at least or even 70% of your cv 
Oh, um, so in my extracurricular, I have uh, like one of the achievements. It's like one, two, two, four, six, six, seven lines of what I did as uh, in the student government for my university. So should that still be there or should I refer to it as well in my education section? You can. So I mean, that's a, that's always going to be a, a discussion. And I think I'll have to go through uh, those lines carefully to be able to comment on that. But okay. uh, what is extracurricular and what is co-curricular? Yeah, it's always <laughs> contention. Yeah. Now, now what you're talking about, if it is uh, co-curricular, then you can actually put it in the uh, in the in the curricular part as well. Okay. We'll go through that uh, one by one. Right. Yeah. Those All right. Ones. Thank you. Yeah, so Gaurav, I think we also have a question from Eric uh, Hugayev. Uh, Eric, maybe you could also turn on your camera and uh, ask those questions. Yeah, hi. Can you hear me and see me? Yeah, so basically I was just uh, writing this. Uh, I'm an international student in Germany. I'm from Russia. And I think that based on the experience of my uh, peers, who are also international students, but also German, uh, there might be some yeah some tremendous differences into how people in consulting firms see the applicants based on their backgrounds especially if they are even uh, both from let's say target schools but are one of them uh, is a person of i don't know person of color or minority and maybe not from germany and the other one is a native person i don't know if you have experienced anything like this and if you can give any tips how it might be different for people who are non-natives uh, to break into a consulting industry as interns or as fresh graduates, or maybe hire, hiring, uh, experienced hires, maybe it's a little bit different, but basically these two groups. And if there is any kind of discrimination against these groups, or it is just maybe that I have very low skilled peers, <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Yes, I can. I mean, I can start. Uh, Eric, maybe you could tell me a little bit about uh, your background. Like, um, have you done any internships and what are you currently looking for? Or yeah, where have you started before? I haven't had any internships yet uh, in terms of like work. I've, uh, I'm coming from Cologne. It's an, uh, a university in Germany. And I uh, had studied there for my business administration bachelor program. And currently I've uh, started with the second bachelor's program in economic uh, mathematics. And I was doing uh, throughout these all years, I've done quite a lot in terms of extracurricular work. Uh, some of the examples, for example, that you have listed are on my resume, like uh, leading a party, a political party, or being a leader in a club. Uh, so, and I have worked part-time for university uh, as a, uh, web development manager, let's say, uh, for a couple of months. And then I was looking for internships and then the coronavirus started and I heard that uh, there is a thing called hiring freeze in companies currently. And maybe this is why I wasn't getting enough responses or they were all time negative. And you are currently applying for an internship or a full-time role? Uh, no, just for internships. Uh, do you speak German? Yeah. My German is uh, way better than my English, actually. I study sorry? in German, yeah. My German is way better than my English and I study in German. Okay, so you, you are fluent in German. You have like yeah. C1, C2 proficiency. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so in that case, uh, basically, Eric, you are, I think you are on the good side. Um, I also know I faced uh, very similar challenges uh, um, like eight years back. But I, I'm born Ukrainian, so I came actually for studying uh, in Germany as well as a foreigner. And um, however, my German was not that good at that time. And uh, if you are talking about discriminating, I think that nowadays there is no discrimination or, or maybe just uh, some little or, or I wouldn't actually say that. Um, in the past, I suffered from some discrimination on my own. Uh, when people were, of course, looking because from consulting standpoint of view, don't forget that they need to justify uh, that they can hire uh, the people either from Germany or from the European Union. And mm -hmm. if your passport is not belonging to one of those categories, that is becoming difficult. 
Nowadays, they also have expanded the list of uh, countries associated. So, for example, those countries who have the association agreement with uh, uh, with the European Union, like Ukraine, um, they are more privileged and it's easier to get a job in Europe uh, with this passport. But for, for the third countries like Russia or um, India or other foreigners, um, it still might be diff uh, more difficult because uh, they need to prove that they were not able to find the same category um, specialist uh, yeah. within German or European nationals. And I mean, European nationals, there are 450 million of them. That's mm -hmm. why it might be a little bit discriminating, but per se, they're not discriminating uh, you or, or any others. And it's a huge advantage that you have been studying uh, at the University of Köln. And um, if you have extremely high GPA and afterwards, uh, I'm pretty sure that you will be also able to find a good job. Um, the thing about last year was indeed there was the hiring freeze imposed by the uh, through the COVID circumstances in Germany. And not only in Germany, it was also worldwide the hiring freeze uh, at least for summer last year, maybe until September, October last year. And if you've applied in that period of time, probably that's why you was rejected. But uh, since you are studying in German and since you are fluent in German, it's a huge advantage for you. You can basically try it out for an internship and the full-time role. Um, it's just very good. I would recommend you to gather some internship experience uh, in Germany, maybe also in other sectors, like try something out in automobiles, try something out in financial services, or go to one of the big four companies for the audit practice. Uh, because with these internships, it will basically even strengthen more your profile. And then um, back in 2012, I also got an offer from one of the leading consulting firms in Germany, and it helped me to get my blue card which is like a green card for European Union. And that's when you completely forget about all visa related issues. Okay. Yeah, Does that make sense for you? To totally, totally. It's just that I happen to have such friends that have found jobs in Russia, for example, uh, in the same industries, even in uh, big free consulting firms, easier and faster than they could have done this in Germany. And they told me that they, their experience was uh, more negative, maybe due to cultural differences. And they see uh, they people see uh, foreigners from non-European union countries as regarding to if you are a national applying uh, with your you, international. You experience. cannot directly compare this because uh, uh, of the competition on the Russian market is not that strong as in the European uh, mm -hmm. market. I mean, Germany has always been one of the most competitive market. Just uh, have a look at Russia. Who studies in Russia? It's mostly Russian and maybe also some people from exotic countries, uh, I would say, uh, from, I don't know, from Africa or in the past from Asia, but not that many people are coming uh, to Russia uh, to, to stay there for a job. And therefore, the competition is not that big. And if those people, uh, those of your friends, they are competing with other guys who, uh, who studied in Russia and stayed in Russia. So from the HR perspective of uh, the recruiting in Moscow, for example, if you are a lady looking into two resumes, you have uh, maybe one, one, uh, one person, Alexandra, who studied only in Russia. And you have Eric, who studied both in Russia and Germany. Who would you like to invite to the interview first? Yeah, makes sense. The second person, I guess. Yeah, so this is from the Russian perspective. And then from the German perspective, you have the person who, for example, Eric, who is not uh, fluent in German, who is a foreign citizen, and still you are in Germany, so your clients speak German. So how can you send Eric to... German speaking clients if he doesn't speak German actually that's on the one hand on the other hand you maybe have uh, I don't know um, Joseph or uh, Andre who are either Germans or who speak already German 
and who all three of them are equally good. All three of them have graduated from top university in Germany or business school. Who would you invite first? Just put yourself into the shoes of the recruiter. So therefore, there is like no literal discrimination. There are simply some of the facts which you need to take into account. But uh, these are the things which uh, we can basically help you out with that because both Gaurav and both myself, we, we passed through that way. I mean, we both came to Germany even without knowing proper uh, German language in the past. And as you see, we are still here. Okay. Yeah, I've already booked a call for uh, Friday, I guess. All right. Then, great. Looking towards to speaking with you soon. Yeah, thank you. Um, Andrew, we have one more question from John. John, are you still here? Maybe you want to ask this question by yourself? Yeah. Hi, hi, Andre. Hi, Alexandra. Hi, Goro. Hi. Hi. Uh, so, as I uh, said in my message, uh, I'm a mechanical engineer currently working in uh, product design and development. So, uh, in the coming September, I'm planning to uh, pursue this uh, particular course, uh, MSc in Technology Management uh, from UCL, University College London. So uh, I have this uh, what uh, uh, an aspiration to break into consulting career. So I wanted to get some insights whether I'm in the right track or uh, yeah, some in, uh, insights from uh, professionals like you. So where did you do your uh, degree from? Uh, my bachelor's I did in Kerala, my hometown. Okay. Any? Uh, it's a uh, target school. Uh, you mean my uh, undergrad uh, college? Mm -hmm. It was a government engineering college. Uh, it was uh, it is a, a second rank college in Kerala. So from that, I am working in the current company through a placement opportunity. It is uh, MRF Tires. If, if you are familiar with it, yeah. yeah. Okay, cool. So I think uh, in that case, I think uh, for the UK university, you can quickly check their placement report for the last two three years and see whether any of their uh, graduates have got into consulting or not. If you don't see any a single trust of consulting, you know, nobody going into consulting, then you should be a little worried and you need to then really, really work hard. Okay. But if you yeah. see consulting company logos in their, um, in their, uh, you know, uh, recruitment report, uh, then you should not be worried because uh, the UK again, uh, just like US and Germany is a very big consulting market. And uh, mm -hmm. normally if you do masters from UK, uh, you know, getting into, uh, a consulting company or investment banking company, those kind of advisory firms is not very difficult. Not very difficult in the sense, there is no barrier to it. You yeah, I'm just skeptical uh, regarding this uh, course which I'm uh, planning to pursue it's because it's not MBA, because I'm going through the that, is, that doesn't matter. That uh, actually yeah. doesn't matter. It's a myth that MBA gives you advantage. Yeah. Yeah. So if you are uh, doing anything, yeah, I mean, uh, uh, masters in psychology as well, yeah, you can still apply <laughs> to all the companies. Don't worry okay. about it. Yes, uh, that was one my major worry because uh, I'm taking this course uh, purely based on interest because the role I'm currently it, it is uh, maybe 50-50% of management as well as technical. So, and I have a personal preference with UK even though this particular course is uh, the best is uh, offered in USA. So, and UCL was one of the topest, uh, topmost uh, top colleges which are uh, offering this course. But when I try to connect with the people who, has, who has already did this course, it is relatively new to that university and uh, the people who passed out uh, this year and the last year could not actually uh, I couldn't find anyone with uh, who has uh, landed into like uh, what a good career because of the COVID situation. And uh, recently, was, yeah, recently that they uh, revised their visa rules too, that it is uh, two years postgraduate work permission. So I'm actually counting on that if I could uh, break into this. So I'm actually yeah. hoping this would be a good uh, card for me. <laughs> yeah, the uncertainty is going to be there for sure. But I, I mean, at least the nuggets that I'm picking up from you, uh, your profile should not be uh, a problem for uh, opportunity uh, in consulting in UK. Okay, that's a great idea. Mm -hmm. All right, cool. Uh, John and everyone else, uh, would you like to hear some further great news, uh, which which we already have for you? Yeah, Can sure. you just identify into the chat? Shall we share some great news with you? <laughs> All right, cool. So yeah, um, guys, I just uh, actually want to, to share uh, great news with you about the upcoming recruiting season. So what uh, Gaurav previously mentioned is uh, now if you really need to uh, get into consulting, please fasten your seatbelts and do this all this stuff because the upcoming hiring season already starts in the second half of uh, August in 
those countries like US and UK, and then in September in all the continental Europe. And it has already started in Middle East, and it's about to start also in other countries uh, from the world. So basically, end of August, September and October are the best months for you to apply and to start receiving your job offers. And I hope that our tips uh, have already given you some of the ideas on how you can write your CV. But remember that there are so many pitfalls there that actually 90% of the candidates got rejected during the screening phase. So if you want to be sure that you belong to those 10%, uh, who actually passed through the screening and got invited to the interviews, then reach out to our team and we are really happy to help you there. Because another great news, which I also wanted to share with you is, as you see in this picture, actually uh, over the last eight weeks, over the summer, um, eight of our mentees received 13 job offers uh, from all leading consulting firms, starting from Bain, McKinsey, Roland Berger, Otto De Little, EY Partenon, uh, Deloitte, uh, Siemens Advanta, Strategy, and maybe you've uh, seen even the post which we published about Mark Terus, one of our mentees. Uh, very recently, like last week, he signed his offer with Strategy and, and is going to join Qatar office um, already in October. And others have either already joined those firms of these uh, companies or are about to join in the coming months. So, and guys, do you want to become the next one? Do you want us to publish the greatest news about you receiving your job offer um, very soon in the coming months? Anyone else wants to receive the salary ranging between 50,000 euros and 200,000 US dollars? Hans uh, Bayer, yeah, Eric? Of course, yeah, sure. I mean, it's pretty obvious. So then um, just take the first step today and uh, we want to uh, give you the opportunity to join our community of VIP clients. Here you just see the, some of the results, uh, some of the, our mentees sharing their greatest news from the past that they have received the offer and we congratulating them. Um, and now you have the opportunity actually just book the first call with one of our client managers and you have an opportunity to receive a free session uh, with me like a strategy call uh, where we will do the detailed analysis of your situation and we can provide you a detailed feedback uh, from our side whether it's on your cv on your application approach or whatever kind of help do you have so eric or john or uh, uh joseph or um uh, Chris or Hans uh, or um, other guys uh, or Rasindu, um, if you are struggling, if you don't know what to do, and if you really want to secure your interview invites and convert them into job offers, then use this opportunity and book the first call with one of our client managers today who will um, be arranging uh, the call with me. And in our strategy session, um it will last for 90 minutes um it usually costs 400 euros but i can give you the special offer today to book it for only 50 euros uh, and the offer is valid for three days so and in this session we will go through specifically your situation your case analyze how you can achieve your goals and how you can reach, uh, receive your offers we can also tell you i will introduce, uh, I want to know you better as a person to see where do you stand, what kind of challenges are you facing, where do you need help. We can also, uh, I can better introduce our company and our services and how those services will actually help you to make it to the offer. So use this opportunity right now, click on the link which you have uh, seen here and book a strategy call uh, with uh, our client manager. Um, and then she will arrange a strategy call with me. Guys, so that's basically the key message from my side. Um, if you don't want to be rejected, just take the first step today and we would be very pleased to serve you and to help you to make it to your office because I'm pretty sure you and your family will be very proud 
about your achievements one day. And if you want to stay in touch with us, do you, uh, did you like our webinars? Can you maybe identify um, here in the chat, was this webinar helpful for you? Can you maybe write down it into the chat? Just say yes or no, whether you liked or whether you didn't like our webinar. Yes, George. Yes, Eric. Yes, very helpful for Joseph. So yeah, uh, guys, let's then keep in touch. Uh, visit our new updated website, consultingmasters.com. We have just press and released it one more time today, the newest version. And follow us in our social networks. And if you liked our webinars, can you please also tag us uh, as consulting masters in your social media, whether in your stories or in the posts or in the photos, if you have taken some and share this with others. And uh, follow us in our uh, social networks and we would be also happy. Or just book a session today with our client manager and book a, a strategy call with me for just only 50 euros instead of 400 euros. And uh, let's make the first step towards your future career uh, together today. Yes, guys, right. I would like to highlight the moment that really if you are interested in it and you want to maybe we really want to communicate with you. We really want to make something efficient for you, something interesting for you. So if you have any ideas, if you want to learn something, if you want to um, discover something new, please share with us in, on our social media. Just write down comments about what would you like to know more about maybe which industry or about uh, I don't know, the, um, the interviews, uh, cases and all this stuff, really share it with us and we're going to do everything for you. So one more time, follow us. And thank you. Thank you so much for your participation today. It was a great webinar. Thank you, coaches. Thank you, guys. It was really great. Thank you very much for coming and for attending. Guys, see you next week. Bye-bye. Take care, you all. Bye-bye. <laughs>